So we're going to create a little page that would show us a table. And the table would show us information about celebrities, which is one of our business objects. And we're going to pick up um, most of the fields here, like that, and we can really organize them if we need to. Right, so we have a table of data. Now what happens if we want to actually edit um, records? So first thing we can do is we can use the Add Edit page. This would create a separate page where we can edit information. What if we want to edit the information on the same page? So one thing you can do is you can actually add a form layout down here. Drop a few fields in this form layout. So let's say we would want to show the name and maybe the age and maybe something like the earnings all in here. Right, so we drop the three fields, can set up the titles for each one of those. Right, so this would be name, this would be age, and we said this would be the earnings. Right, so now that we have the three fields, we actually need to get some data into them. To get the data, we'll need a variable. Uh, but we want the variable to be based on a type, so let's create a type from our endpoint. And this variable is going to be used to update the data. So to do that, we're going to go to the celebrities, and the patch operation is the actual operation that does an update. Yeah, so let's go over, and we're going to create something that has the structure that is needed in order to do a patch, so all of those fields. Again, some of those fields are actually, we don't need to have them here because they are automatically populated. Um, so we'll call this one the celeb type and click finish. Now that we have the type with those fields, we can go over and create a variable. So I'll call this one celeb for update and it would be based on the new type we just created. All right, so it would also have the fields, which means that now we can go back to the UI and um, set the field data to come from this variable. Okay, so this would show us the name, and this would show us the age, and this would show us um, the earnings. Like that. So that's nice, but there's no value in this variable, right? So we need to populate it. So let's do it with the event on the table. On the table, there's an event called first selected row. It's invoked when we are selecting a row. And when we select a row, what we want to do is assign a variable. And we're going to take the row data, so that's the data for the row that we selected, and put it into this variable. It has the same name of field, so should just work for us. Let's click Save, switch over to our page, and let's look at the page at live view. And now we can click on records and we can see the data shown here. Nice. Um, the nice. The next thing we need to do is we actually need to be able to save the information. So to save the information, we're going to add a button. Okay, we'll add it to the end of the page. So set the Save button here. I'm going to call this button the save button. Okay. And we need it to do something. So when we click on it, okay, we're going to call a rest endpoint. And the rest endpoint is the celebrity patch operation. This requires us to map the ID of the record that we're going to update. So this comes from our celebrity for update, we'll take the ID, and it also requires us to pass a body, so since our type was based on the body um, of the request for this, we can just map it directly like that. Okay, so if we now run it, you'll see we're missing one more thing, so I'll just show you what happens right now. If we go to live mode and we click something and we then update, for example, the age here for Orlando to be 33. Click Save. It's actually saved the data, but you don't see it 
reflected here unless you do a refresh to the page. Okay, so now it's 33. So what happens is that we update the variable and we update the backend, but we don't update the UI. So in our flow here, we need to add one more thing, which is file data provider event. Okay, so after we update, we want to take the service data provider that is behind the table and we want to refresh it. Alright, so now if we go back to our live view and we pick up Drake for example and update his age and then click save, this is immediately reflected in the table. Alright, so now we have a page where we can see a table and update the data in the same page. So, building from this page, we want to, instead of showing the form down here, we want to actually have it in a pop-up. It's a little bit more organized that way. So if we switch over and look at the Oracle Jet cookbook, okay, uh, under the layout section, you'll see that they have this concept of a dialogue. And the first demo that they have is called the model dialogue. Okay. And the model dialogue basically just opens a nice little pop-up where there's an OK button that closes the pop-up. So we want to use the same approach in our VBCS page. And um, if you look at the information, you'll see that you need to use an OJ dialog component to do this. Let's switch over back to VBCS. Now if you go to the layout components in VBCS, you won't see the dialog in here. And one of the reasons is because it's not that easy to actually design with the dialog, it's a separate area. But you can still add it to your page, so let's do that. Um, we're going to switch over to the code, okay? And we can just add a dialog here. Now I'm going to save myself some time. We're going over to the Jet example and the demo HTML that they have, and I'm just going to copy over this whole section. So this includes the button that opens the dialog and the dialog itself. So copy this over and just paste it into the HTML here. Okay. We're going to clean it up in a second, but just to show you what we just added to our application, back in the live mode, if we click, now we have the open di model dialog, and um, if we click on it, it won't open. There's one more thing that we forgot to do. Um, we added the dialog button, but dialog wasn't added from the component palette, and therefore it's not one of the components that we load in this page. So we switched over to the code view, take over one of the components that we have here and copy-paste it and just like we had a button we're going to add a dialog so OJ dialog which maps to the OJS OJ dialog so component like that so now if we switch back to the live view okay click the button we have the dialog Alright, so we just added a dialog. Now we need to take whatever is in this area and put it inside the dialog. That should be quite easy. The other thing that we want to do is we want to hook up this button that says OK. Um, right now what the button does is closes the dialog. We want to actually also save the data. Okay, so if we cl click OK to close the dialog. We want to just move it so those components are used there. Um, we'll do it from the code view mostly. Okay, so first of all, a little bit of cleaning. Um, you see here the buttons that they added have the methods for them defined this way. And we're going to do it the proper way for VBCS, which is to copy this function, for example. Okay, and we're going to add JavaScript in our page model. Okay, so let's add a page module prototype function, we'll call this one the uh, open dialog, then we just paste the code, so this one actually does the close, so switch here to call this one, oh, actually let's save ourselves some time, copy this, we need actually one method that closes the dialog and one method that opens the dialog. So now we have a match, open, open, close, close. So we basically added two module level functions to our page. Okay, Back to our design, we can now um, remove this section from the code. Okay, 
um, the other thing that we also have this button that opens okay so the right way to do it is instead of doing it with this type of data bind in VBCS the way we do it pop away and go to the live view design view sorry and we take the button and we say when you click the button let's do an event okay and what we want to do in this event now is call a module function okay and the module function would be our open dialog okay so that's all we need to do if you look at the page right now um, and you switch back to live mode and you click the open model dialog we still open the dialog so we got this to work okay and um, we didn't add the method here or we basically removed the method from the closed dialog so it's not closing it um, but in order to do that let's go back to our view here and we're going to replace the OK button okay with the button that does save right so just copy over the save button from here and replace the OK button Yeah, you don't need the button over here anymore it's now part of the dialog so remember the save button currently saves the record okay and we also needed to close the dialog right so let's look at the method that we invoked here okay this is the save and then invoke the data provider event and then the next thing that we want to do is call a module function okay and close our dialog all right so now we got this one done and the last part is instead of showing text in the window we want to show the form so let's remove the text here and instead bring over this form that we designed outside of the dialog into the dialog let's right, switch over to the live view we see the data we pick up a record and we click open dialog and we can update the earnings for example to 94 and it's now showing 94 all right so this works um, we'll do one more change to our application and this is maybe we don't want to have this um, button in order to open the dialog maybe what we want to do is open the dialog um, when we uh, click something in the table okay so let's add a hyperlink to our table okay. and we'll call this one edit All right. and then we need this edit to do the same thing that the open dialog does so we'll pick up here and pick up the right event now it's sometimes hard to know which event this is this is the button click action and one nice thing that I like to do um, in order to keep my application a little bit more organized is this is button click action one go to your events and rename them okay uh, so not to the events to the actions so button click action one let's rename this one to be open dialogue okay so that's the name of the action flow now the rename renames it also in your html okay so now you can go over to your edit and say i need a new custom event that would hook up to the click and we'll use the open dialog All right so now we switch back to the live view okay we have our table and we can click for example on Howard's turn get the information here update his age his earnings and click save closes the dialog and updates age and earning and that's how you do an update in a pop-up in a table